Nice second and ten. Palmer into the flat. Pass is complete. Getting away is Pearson. Inside the 50 down to the 45 yard line. Pearson showing he's got some hands tonight. That is his third reception, and he came into the game with only two receptions for the season. And the surprise for me, I think, is that Brandon Hancock isn't running these plays for USC, their freshman tailback, excuse me, freshman fullback, because he's the kind of guy who will make that play and maybe even get a little more out of it than Pearson, although it's hard to quibble yeah. with what he just got. is an excellent play. But I'm thinking people plays. You take some of your better players, put them in those spots, and get them going downfield. Numbers to Carson Palmer. Virgil Williams talking about a hard hitter and he missed the tackle. Now it's Hancock moving around. Palmer, plenty of time, now moving. Brown is chasing him, throws it, and it is complete down to the 13-yard line to Kerry Colbert. His second reception of the night. Picking on Jason David. What a good job by Kerry Colbert, number 83, running this route. He ran a short route, notices his quarterback in trouble. Watch him point, throw it downfield, throw it downfield. I'll go get it. And Carson Palmer put it out there. That's exactly what Kerry Colbert yeah. did. Good communication between the two. They had a communication breakdown in the Kansas State game on the last drive. Cost them an opportunity to tie. They've spent some extra time together. They're definitely on the same page. 19 receptions for Colbert the last three games. He picked up 32. McCullough, right side. The defense collapses as the penalty flags come flying in. Well, McCullough's doing the, uh, the workload tonight. Yeah, we'll listen into the call once again. Pete Carroll, defensive coach. holding on the offense, 10 yards from the previous spot. Replay first down. Well, let's see what EJ's cooking up at the big game house. Ernie. Well, we're cooking up a little Chili's halftime report, as a matter of fact, Ron. And at that time, we'll show you the highlights of Texas trying to stay unbeaten going into the showdown with Oklahoma the next week, but they had to deal with the Oklahoma State Cowboys first. Ole Miss pulls a stunner, knocks off the number six Gators, and Stanford scored first, and Notre Dame scored a bunch. We'll have the highlights of that one from South Bend. All that on the halftime report brought to you by Chili's, huh? Thank you, Ray. First and 20 from the 24. McCullough, nothing doing. And he is going to be dropped for about a three-yard loss. Jeremy Williams, the junior out of Spokane, Washington, coming in to make the stop. This is a guy that plays high. He's got a great burst at the line of scrimmage, and we've seen it a couple of times tonight. And he's a big, tall guy playing defensive tackle, 6'4". Oftentimes, you see your defensive tackle guys being more 6'1", 6'2", so they can play lower against those double-team blocks. But Jeremy Williams plays low, but they call it with a flat back. Mm -hmm. He's really impressive. Now they're going to call it a loss of four. 1-10 to play in the half. Second and a bunch. Ball's loose. Palmer fell on it. USC will still have possession of the football as we're inside of a minute. Second play in a row that looked bad for USC. Quarterback center exchange. Ball never really got up to Carson Palmer. Norm Katnick, number 62, the center. The previous play was a misdirection play. It seemed as if Sultan McCullough went the wrong way. <laughs> Opposite where Carson Palmer thought he would go. USC needs a play to look like it's supposed to on this third down. Third down and about 26 and a half. And Mike Williams in the slot. They're bringing five. They throw it out. Incomplete. McCullough had it and dropped it. Fourth drop tonight for the USC receiving court. Now USC will have to punt the football. They must up. I take that back. Ryan Colleen's going to run out there and attempt a field goal. Dunning hit one hard earlier in the ball game into the wind. Let's see what Colleen can do. Colleen, three of four, kicking the football. His longest field goal is 43. This is Mark at the 38-yard line. It'll be about a 48-yarder. Good snap. Good hold. Hits the upright. Now 
the young man had the distance. Just clipping the right upright. Well, tonight's free play is created with NCAA football 2003 from EA Sports. It's in the game. Here are the highlights from the Texas Tech-Iowa State game. We'll broadcast next Saturday night from Ames. Early on, it's Senek Kalalas, the do-everything quarterback, goes 18 yards. Cyclones up 7-0. Then Cliff Kingsbury to Wes Welker in the end zone. Tied at 14. The Red Raiders again. Kingsbury, Anton Page, 72 yards for the score. And the pride of New Braunfels, Cliff Kingsbury, the line. It. They run away from the Cyclones and log on to easports.com and cast your vote on the outcome of next week's game. Now Washington State keeping it on the ground with John Tippins. With 10 seconds left, he scampers out of bounds, not before a first down. By the way, how about down in College Station, Texas? Not much love lost between these two teams, and Mike Leach has to be pleased as Tech Squad upsets Texas A&M. They get the new offensive coordinator, but R.C. Slocum's defense, I tell you, that the, the defense doesn't give up 48 points, but they did today. Yeah, what happened to the wrecking crew? Because mm. they've been playing so well all year. Remember, they only gave up 13 points against Virginia Tech and held that dynamic rushing duo of the untouchables under 100 yards combined. It's a big day for Mike Leach's offense. We'll stick around for the choice halftime report. Ernie in the big game house. Catch you up on everything today. Five wide receivers set. Passes in and out of the hands of DeVar Darling. We still have five seconds left on the play. And a lot of people would question why do you throw the ball underneath like that? Because if you get a first down, the clock stops. And Ernie in the big game house. Scores and highlights. Plus Oklahoma State, the West Miles team came down to Austin. And they were prepared to play. Texas now sets their sights on next Saturday's game with Oklahoma. The Red River shootout at the Cotton Bowl. Oklahoma playing tonight against Missouri. Now Mike Price doing a little player shuffle there, huh? The land animated didn't like Buzz, not like the personnel set he had in the ball game. And boy, that was frustrating not to get that last completion for his offense. Now with five seconds left, they're going to try to play it safe with Tippins, and that's going to do it. A lot of fireworks early on. USC was the first to draw blood in the opening quarter, but then Washington State coming back. Ten unanswered points. Here's Craig Sager with Coach Price. Well, Coach, ten points. You guess no one defense in the country, but what's your assessment of the score and your team? Well, I think we can move the ball. I I feel bad about that play down there. I shouldn't have called that play on fourth and one. A spread quarterback snake, you know. We should have just lined up in our goal line and rammed it down in there, and we didn't do it. I had to have more confidence in my kids than that. But I don't think they can stop us, but we're not stopping them too good either. So it's a close game. With their All-American safety, Troy Polamalu out of the ball game. Will that affect your game calling in the second half? It, well, it did a little bit because uh, he's a heck of a player. I like having him on the bench a lot more than I like having him on the field. I think so. The score at halftime right now, Washington State 10, USC 7. Let's go to the big house and Ernie Johnson. The game has gone on. Norm Chow took a few shots downfield early in the game and they've retreated from that. Everything they're throwing now is underneath. I don't know if it's because Washington State is playing so deep or if they're trying to roll them to sleep to try and get deep later. Vargas straight ahead running inside the 15, down to about the 13 yard line. Vargas, number 25. I really think area. coming into this game, the pressure was on this USC offense. You knew what you were getting with the USC defense, but the Trojan offense, they had to finally produce. And the USC defense has set up USC's offense for an opportunity to score some points and also has kept Washington State out of the end zone. Remember the fourth and right. short where they stopped Jason Gesser. Now here's a chance for USC's offense to capitalize after a special teams miscue. First and 10 from the 13-yard line. They'll keep it on the ground again, and this time Washington State there to tie him up. Isaac Brown, the junior out of Upland, California. He led the charge of Red Jersey. Isaac Brown lost it two yards on the ball. Isaac Brown, known as a sack master, came into this game with four. His goal is to get ten this year, and then his defensive line coach, Rob Akey, is going to get an ear, a couple of earrings as part of their bet. But this time, he played the run very well. Well, we just got an update on Troy Palomalo. They're saying now it's an ankle sprain, and he is questionable to return. Which is actually good news because there are no broken bones. Three wide receivers, empty backfield. Park Palmer in the left flat. McKenzie, touchdown USC! Touchdown USC on the pass. That brings a smile to Pete Carroll's face, Malifu McKenzie. 
with his second touchdown reception of the year. And I don't think there's any more popular player on this team than Malifu McKenzie because of all he's gone through in order to get back and play college football. He's a guy who lost his father last year, went through some personal struggles, made his way back to the team this year, granted a six year of eligibility, is making the most of it. Lane for the extra point, and it is good. Now USC struck first in the opening quarter on their opening drive. They do likewise here in the third. Palmer to McKenzie to Pater. Inside of Martin Stadium, fans, you can vote for tonight's U.S. Army Players of the Game, powered by America Online. Simply log on to tbssuperstation.com or AOL keyword big play and cast your vote on the short field, and they took advantage of it. Yeah, I think Coach Price would say, well, DeVar Darling gave him the short field with the fumble. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. That's but, of right. course, he would say, you know, as a Cougar, we'll take it as a family. But that's something they cannot afford to do, turnovers in the kicking game. And have we not seen a number of kicking miscues all across the country this year in college football? Both coaches talked about it. Washington State, Sammy Moore. Up to the 25-yard line, and that's where they'll begin first and 10. Big play Saturday keeps rolling after the game with Matt and Cherie on the Movie Bowl. They'll have more post-college living advice while Mel Gibson, Danny Glover, and Chris Rock will throw that in or add it again in Lethal Weapon 4 after the game on the Movie Bowl. Only a TBS Superstation. You can't not mention Joe Pesci. He'll come oh. after us. You don't want Joe upset. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. The four. Yeah, that's it. Okay. <laughs> Washington State, three wide receivers to start off. And they're going to keep it on the ground, try the right side, plenty of running room for Green, to the 40, to the 50, it's a race! Touch back! Golden goalpost! for Jermaine Green. Three wide receivers set. Got a nice block at the point of attack from number 67, Calvin Armstrong. And the whole time, as you see the extra point from Dunning, which is good the whole time, I'm thinking Jermaine Green has a bad knee and hasn't really run away from anyone thus far this year. Could they, could they run him down? There's Mike Bush, number five. Great block on William Buchanan. Green with the cutback, showing the Juco talent that he brought with him and watching the state now leads. Again, great cutback though. Great cutback, he got some help along the way. Right here, number 67, Armstrong, good block at the point of attack. And then downfield, he picked up a block from Mike Bush, number five. So I'm back to your left, he took down William Buchanan, number 31, the freshman cornerback. Great cutback by Jermaine Green. This is what they've been waiting to see. Had 100 plus yards, I believe, against Montana State earlier this year. But they've been waiting for the breakout from the Herald of Junior College transfer. Maybe that's the kickstart he was looking for. Four wide receivers. Where would Troy Palomalu have been on that play? Somewhere around the football. Penalty <laughs> flags are thrown all over the place. You'd have to bet that. Prior to the snap, dead ball, false start on the offense, five-yard penalty, still first down. Fans, for exclusive news and recruiting coverage of your favorite teams, log on now to Rivals.com. You know, we talked about it being the longest play for Washington State. That's the longest given up by USC this year also. Yeah, you don't usually see USC give up those types of plays because they run to the football so well. They pursue and close down angles, and the cutback got them, and normally they take away cutbacks. Big defensive series for Washington State now because they have momentum on their side, and they don't want USC to go on a march. They want to keep the momentum with them as the Washington State players are trying to get the crowd into the ball game. And the longer it sits, the better it is for Washington State. Well, they're resetting the clock. 
the game clock at the far end of the field. 12-32, please. See, it is actually an advantage for Washington State right now. It's only one second differential. They need one more second on it. But for Washington State's defense, this allows the crowd to really get revved up. That's right. Really get into it. So Carson Palmer, the quarterback, has to use his poise, use his senior leadership, get his team settled down, forget the penalty on first down, and start a march. Six straight trips to Pullman. USC has beaten the Cougars. Kelly and Williams split out to the near side. Incomplete. Colbert, the intended receiver. Ball was behind him, low and behind him. On an out route, it has to be out ahead of him, headed towards the sidelines. Watch Colbert. He's just going to come down here and break off to the sideline, but watch how he has to reach back. See, hard to do that when your momentum's headed the other way. Notice how his feet came out from under him. Hard to make that sudden stop and stay balanced. So you see Pete Carroll look out with a bit of concern. Second down and 15 for the Trojans. They'll keep it on the ground. Straight ahead running. Picking up maybe four on the play. Sultan McCullough, the senior out of Pasadena, California. He runs a 10-1-700. That's picking him up and laying him down. Washington State now has trotted in their dime package. They brought number 15, Carl Pema in, and number 26, Jeremy Bohannon. Six defensive backs. That's Bill Doba, the defensive coordinator for Washington State, who does such a great job scheming and preparing. I'm betting they'll play some type of a zone here. Let USC catch it underneath and go make the tackle. The only rush four. Here comes the fifth. Palmer over the middle. Pass is complete. Up to the 35-yard line. Gary Colbert fighting his way. Virgil Williams hanging all over him. That is a big-time catch. That's why he's the most consistent receiver for USC. And there was nothing wrong with the call by Bill Doba. They played too deep zone. See Isaac Brown, number nine, coming in, laying the hit on Carson Palmer. But he stays in strong, delivers a strike. Look at the coverage. Virgil Williams, number 24, on the play. Jeremy Bohannon. Nothing wrong with the call. Really, almost yeah. nothing wrong with the coverage. That was just a great play by Kerry Colbert. And a good pass. Pick up of 17 on the play. Pearson and Fargus in the eye. Palmer looking. Passing. Completing. Pick up of only three on the play. And again, it is Kerry Colbert. That is his fourth reception tonight. Picked up only two on the play. This is where I'm thinking USC at some point half going underneath four and five yard routes. They've got to push Washington State deeper and open up a few lanes for their guys to exploit. And in the process, you're allowing Carson Palmer to get into a rhythm. Second down and eight. Vargas hits the edge, gets up to the 45, dives forward to about the 47 yard line. That'll be good for another first down for USC. TBS Big Play Saturday, brought to you by Best Buy for the latest technology. Turn on the fun, or by Discover. And by Wrangler and Wrangler's new five-star premium denim jeans. Real, comfortable jeans. First and 10 from the 47. Vargas, nothing doing. You know, we're talking about Bill Dobin, his eighth, eighth season defensive coordinator. He has challenged his defensive line. They are one of the best in the conference, but he knew that, and he considers his secondary adequate, but he knew that his defensive line had to try to stop this rushing game of USC. So far, they've done a pretty good job at that. And also protect their linebackers. You know, these aren't the linebackers that they've wanted to play with all year. They're missing Will Deerting. Had a great opening game, three interceptions against Nevada. One return for 98 yards and a touchdown. So they don't have all their personnel. They need the defensive line to be scout all day long. Two wide receivers to the right. They go to the tight end. Holmes makes the catch. He'll be close to the first down. What kind of weapon is that to have a tight end like Alex Holmes, who's not only a good blocker, but also has some pretty sure hands? Also has great recognition, too, because 
Right here is the tight end, Alex Holmes, and it's a blitz read, what they call a hot route. He sees the blitz, goes right into the open space, and he hits it. You know, he's 265 pounds with soft hands. That's almost criminal, you know? Isn't it illegal? He's something. supposed to be pass blocking, right? Yeah. He's supposed to be locking out on a defensive end, mm -hmm. not run, rumbling downfield in the secondary, because you keep having to hit guys that big all game long, it gets old for the defensive backs. Absolutely. And after a while, you might miss one, you know, subconsciously, because you're tired of whacking a big fellow like that. Well, his workout partner back in California, how about Eric Dickerson? Yeah, you know, the guy can work out pretty well, because I remember Eric Dickerson, and you talk about guys picking him up putting him down. Yeah. All my, right? My guy's the one who won the Rams. That's yeah. who I work out with. <laughs> yeah, you, you and me both. Yeah, Krispy Kreme workout. And it was good enough for a first down. First and ten, McKenzie and Pearson now in the backfield. A tight set. Play action. Palmer is going to be dropped. They had five defensive backs in. Palmer had absolutely no shot. Second sack given up by his offensive line tonight. That's, and that's Isaac Brown, who prides himself on his pass rush abilities. When you look at him, does he look like a normal defensive end? He's built more like a, you know, really a lean linebacker exactly. who lines up a defensive end. He's bulked up to about 235, 240 this year, but still he's a speed rusher. And when a guy's wearing number nine, you don't think of him as a defensive end. No. And that's his fifth sack of the season. Back to that honorable mention last year. Carson Palmer trying to buy some time, looking. Going up top, and he's just going to throw this away. Now let's go to the big game house with Ernie. Thank you very much, Ron. How's Oklahoma doing tonight, you ask? <clears throat> well, they had to break open a tight game against Missouri on this Nate Hibble to Curtis Fagan hookup. They've added another score after that right now. It is 23 to 7, about midway through the third. Back to you, Ron. Choking Ernie up. <laughs> He's a big OU fan, I guess. But I think it's the food. Yeah, you know, as much food. food as are getting back there. I think that chili came up on him a little bit there. <laughs> big game for Bob Stoops. I think his club got a wake-up call. The way Texas played today. Five defensive backs in. Palmer into the flat. Carson Palmer's pass is complete to Kareem Kelly. Jason David was on the coverage. That's a tough cover for Jason David. It is because you have to respect Kareem Kelly's deep ability. And on this play, you'll watch him as he comes downfield. Here's Jason David, the corner, having to lock up against Kelly. And Kelly runs downfield and comes back, runs to the sideline, and David is in excellent position, just doesn't get to the upfield arm. You've got to take away the upfield arm so these guys can't make the catch. Now still short of the first down, fourth and eight. Alone at his 45. Look at both gunners here, Ron. Yeah. On the same side, you don't often see that formation in punting. And he booms this. That's on its way to Moscow, Idaho. They're taking it to 20. Washington State has something to cheer about here in the second quarter. 7.34 to play in quarter number three. And it's a 17-14 Cougar lead. Think this is your typical ATV? It's not. Say goodbye to bolt-on accessories and milk crates. A pin is all you need on Articat's new MRP. In the blink of more ways to use your ATV. Nothing but courage and wants to play, but if he can't run full speed, he might be hurting his ball club trying to cover these fleet wide receivers. Four wide receivers, they keep it on the ground. Gesser keeps it, looks to the sideline, takes a shot as he heads out of bounds. Jason Leach coming up from that strong safety spot, the backup to Palomalu. I don't think Mike Price wants to see his quarterback take those shots into the ribs. No, he doesn't, but he calls a play that puts him in a position to yeah. do that. And Jason Gesser trying to get to the sideline, hoping that Jason Leach doesn't launch and take the shot. But if you're Jason Leach, you know that Jason Gesser's a little bit sore. So yep. if it's inbounds and it's legal, you take your shot at it. And that's exactly what he did. Four wide receivers, three to the right, one to the left. Tippins alone in the backfield. Yes, sir. Incomplete. Should have been picked off. Champ Simmons had it right in his hands. But he was turning around a little awkward on that. So it was intended for Jerome Riley. 
He would have loved that. That would have been a savoring interception. It was. Let's see if Jason Gesser gets set and is able to get anything on it. Didn't really seem to step into it as a quarterback normally does. You wonder how much he's hurting. Watch Simmons. He turned just as the ball got to him. Mm -hmm. And as you mentioned, somewhat of an awkward turn for him because he was trying to locate his coverage, get to his drop point, then get his head back around. Didn't have enough time to get himself set up and catch the football. But Jason Gessler, you just wonder how much his ribs or his elbow is hurting him right now. 0 for 5 on third down. He takes a shot as he throws it up into the USC bench. Sean Cody is the one who came in and lowered the boom on him, the sophomore out of Hacienda Heights. And the coaching staff of Washington State, they're not afraid to show the offensive lineman what Gesser goes through. He took a shot on this one. Here's another one, and when you talk about that in films, they tell the guys all the time, listen, this is the kind of courageous guy you're blocking for. Because oftentimes, he will put the ball right on the money as he takes a hit, <laughs> such as that. And they want their guys to appreciate what he goes through to get them the football. Osler's kick. Bad play by the punt return. You gotta go pick up the football. And they're just letting him get yardage Johnny. it. Goes Bad down play. to the 19-yard line. The kick covered 59 yards, so he did his job. Let's take a look at this week's Jack Daniels original hard cold flashback. We take you back to the 1998 Rose Bowl. Washington State versus Michigan. Ryan Lee to Kevin McKenzie, 15-yard TD. How about Charles Woodson? Little interception in the end zone of a Ryan Lee pass. And with time, time winding down, Washington State attempts to spike the ball. But sorry, the clock kept going. Michigan wins it, 21 to 16. And the Washington State fans still say there's one second on the clock. They should have gotten one more try. Always will. Keeping it on the ground with Sultan McCullough. Maybe picked up a couple on the There front. was no play, was no play. Nope. prior to the snap. Dead ball, false start on the offense. Five-yard penalty. Replay first down. Second series in a row that USC starts with a five-yard penalty. We see Jason Gesser talking upstairs to his offensive coaches. See what they, might, what they may be seeing in terms of coverage, what he might have to call in terms of protection for his offensive line because USC's defensive front is really starting to get to him on just about every pass attempt. I guess they're just really turned into the prototype quarterback, the young man out of Hawaii. He's a guy that Rick Neuheisel, the coach of Washington, who had the disappointing loss today, said when he comes into the game, you hold your breath. Pete Carroll has the same respect. Right now, Pearson and Fargus in the backfield. First down and 15, 7 4 to play in the third. Penalties almost even between the two teams. Three-step drop into the flat, complete to Williams. Keeps moving the feet up to the 24-yard line. Eric Coleman on the stop. That is the mentality of USC. They finish every play. They, they, they play to the whistle, and Mike Price has told his troops about that. That's become a theme for Washington State. Finish till the, through the whistle. And he goes, USC does it, and he was trying to impress upon his guys. This is what we need to do. Mike Williams catches the ball. Should have been dropped at the spot he caught mm -hmm. the pass. Instead, uses his six foot five inch frame to fight for about five additional yards. What was Bobby Bowden's line? They yeah, played for the echo of the whistle. <laughs> <laughs> Second and five. Palmer, short pass underneath to Kelly. Takes a couple of hits, gets up to the 30, and that'll be a first down. In fact, in that finish story, Mike Price has gone around the locker room and put the word finish on everything, even on the doors to the bathroom. Yeah, they want to make sure these guys you know, have it in, impressed upon them that every play must be finished. That's the way that you win. It's on their itinerary for this weekend about going to the hotel and coming here to the game. Finish. That's how they let us know they talk all the time. It's a different homecoming theme for the students, yeah. but for Washington State's team, it is the word finish. Marcus Trufant. Marcus looked like he was going to reach the corner. Loss of two on the play, courtesy of Trufant. What a great play for a corner. Oftentimes when you talk about a corner, all you talk about is his ability to cover in pass routes. But Marcus Trufant read the run, knew it wasn't going to be a halfback pass, and used his sprinter speed to come up and upend Justin Fargus. He is a four-year starter, two years all Pac-10 honorable mention for good reason. 
I think he's going to move up a little this year on I that one. Too. Washington State brings five. They throw underneath to Pearson. He falls forward. It'll be short of the first down by a body yard. And on the tackle, number 24, Virgil Williams. Well, our next telecast will be coming your way next Saturday night at 7 o'clock Eastern right here on TBS. The Red Raiders of Texas Tech travel to Ames, Iowa to take on the 15th ranked Iowa State Cyclones of Dan McCartney. And I'll tell you what, the state of Iowa is football crazy. Kirk Ferentz, great job at Iowa winning today. And, of course, Texas A&M losing to Texas Tech. So Coach Leach will have Cliff Kingsbury and his troops ready to go to Ames next Saturday. Yeah, they put up big numbers the last two weeks, about 49 points against New Mexico, 48 today. On third down and one, Carson Palmer throws to Pearson. He can't get the hand on it. And that'll bring up a fourth down and one. Interesting play call on third and one when you've been successful running the ball. But they've also gotten stacked up a couple of times in third and short. And I'm sure that Norm Chow was thinking that. It's really a good call because he snuck Pearson out wide open. Carson Palmer, one of the few times he doesn't deliver the ball where it's supposed to be. He threw it behind him. Tough catch for a fullback to make. Brings up a fourth down. averaging about 43 yards a kick. No pressure. Nice high spiraling kick. Trufant back to the 15. Can't shake the jerseys. And he is dropped back at the 10 yard line. 44 yards on the kick. Well, this week's installment of Home Depot Building a Team features a breakdown of how far some of the Washington State Cougars have had to travel to attend school here in Coleman. <laughs> you know about that 2900. I know about that 2900 coming from Florida, but Alaska, the Hawaiian Islands, when you look at Jason Gesser, look at the breakdown. Because most of the time you talk about building a team with your home state, excuse me, right up there with Washington, I didn't get it in the right spot. But Washington with 28, you know, normally that would dominate. But when you talk with Mike Price, only 40,000 people in the two county regions surrounding this stadium. So they have to go elsewhere to get their players. Straight ahead running this time, it is John Tippins as Washington State began that drive with their worst field position of the evening. So how about the 75-yard burst by Green, and then Tippins picks up 14 on that. That defensive line of USC not doing the job right now. And Jermaine Green is probably wondering why he's not still in the game running the football, <laughs> as he would be the guy with the quote-unquote hot hand after a 75-yard touchdown run. But when you have three backs who can run the football equally well, it gives you a chance to keep rotating them in and out. You can see the numbers just a moment ago. Play clock down to eight. Gesser, play action, looking for time. Throws it complete up to the 39-yard line of Jerome Riley. Riley, the senior out of California. Here's a guy They said, you're not going to play a whole lot of Cal. Ended up playing 67 plays. Yeah, they told him 20-something snaps. And here's Jason Gesser standing in, delivering the ball before Mike Patterson, number 99, knocks him to the turf again. They're hoping all those hits take a toll on him eventually, but they need to check history. Jason Gesser's had a lot of hits oh, in yeah. his career, and he just keeps popping up and firing. Nice mix of run and pass in this drive. Gesser. Complete. Bush. Another first down. William Buchanan on the coverage. The redshirt freshman and son of the great Willie Buchanan. Oh, we talk about Jason Gesser, and you know, we've all heard about the billboards in, Mon Mon or in Manhattan. He had his in Dusty Washington, population about 11, they keep telling us. <laughs> give or take. <laughs> yeah, give or take. Depends on who's in town that day. Guess who for the Heisman? I love it. On the ground, Tippins. He bangs his way close to the 40-yard line. And what I like most about that story about them doing the, the, the poster at the Grain Place at Dusty is the respect athletic directors have for each mm -hmm. other. Because Jim Sterk, the athletic director of Washington State, thought, 
you know, we don't want to make fun of our counterparts at Oregon. So he called Bill Moose, who's right. the athletic director of Oregon, and listen, we're not trying to make fun of you. It's just a, a campaign for us because Oregon has spent all the money in Manhattan for the billboards <laughs> for their guys. And, and, and Bill Moose just laughed and said, great idea. Go for it. Why That's not? a nice job of, of respect of the, between member institutions. I guess we've got some pretty solid numbers tonight. We'll throw it up one more time. Complete. Devard Darling tiptoeing down the sidelines, and he's going to be short of the first down. Should be third and about a yard, maybe a half a yard. I'll tell you, Gesser has been impressive tonight because what we saw last week, he didn't throw that out with a lot of mustard on it because of the, the, the uh, dislocated rib. Tonight, he seems like he's got a little more velocity. A little more velocity, and the other thing I've noticed, too, is he's such a great dart thrower. Yeah. You know, in other words, his timing is so precise. One, two, three, boom. Ball's already there waiting for the receiver. Then it takes less arm to get it there because you've already put it out there for him. Washington State 0 for 6 on third down. Make it 1 for 7. Let's check in now with Aaron Andrews. Aaron? Well, Ron, not only is Jason Gesser campaigning for the Heisman, but he's also campaigning for his job after football. Look out, Ron and Charles. Jason wants to be a sports commentator when football is over. We got our hands on his demo tape. He's actually a broadcast major, and last spring he worked as a news anchor and a weatherman on Cable 8, a campus channel. Now, he told me he doesn't like reading the teleprompter, so he seemed, he would seem just fine up there in the booth with you guys. What do you think? Hey, hey, he's hey, 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 hey. What do you mean he'll be fine? He looks great on the field. Let's keep him where he belongs, okay? <laughs> I'll tell you. Tippins, left side. He's trying to be a weatherman. The only job you can be wrong 75% of the time and still keep it. Hey, what's Aaron trying to do to us? I know. Is, it, is, she, is she trying to tell us something? I think my kids went through college. That's Spike Dykes' old line, second life. He was a great former Texas Tech coach. Wants to come back as a backup quarterback or a weatherman. He's everybody, right. Everybody thinks you're better than you really are. <laughs> He's right. 139 to play in the third quarter. The Cougars leading at 17-14. Now Jermaine Green with a 75-yard touchdown run in the backfield behind Gesser. Here comes a little reverse. He fakes it, keeps it. Still on his feet, looking for a block. To the 20, to the 15-yard line, Jermaine Green. 17-yard pickup. That was all on his own effort. Third gadget play. Two reverses earlier, now it's a fake. Sean Cody, number 84 for USC, has the opportunity to end it right there. Misses the tackle. And then there's a second missed tackle coming up. Number 31, William Buchanan. Loses his feet, goes to his knee. You gotta stay up in a good football position in order to make the tackle. Sean Cody, number 84, is of course a freshman All-America. He's not gonna miss many of these, but he did here. Jermaine Green shook him off and continued downfield. Washington State has something going. Still feeling the loss of Troy Palomalu. Yes, sir, again, looking into the end zone, incomplete. Intended for DeVar Darling. And again, Gessler took a seat on the turf. I thought he had him on the first cut, yeah. and it looked like he double-clutched and held it, and then when he did, that attracted more attention. See how he pulled it down and then let it go? Before he was ridden to the turf by the D-line. And then next thing you know, you've got three USC Trojans in the area. Mm -hmm. Probably fortunate it was just incomplete. Now, Kenichi Udezi decided to put 280 pounds on him. Every bit of it. Yep. Second down and 10. You can see the pressures tonight. 10 hurries. Nine hits. Yes, we're being chased. Cuts up field. Down to about the 11 to 10 yard line. Oscar Lou, the true freshman out of Indio, California, on the stop. That'll set up a third down and five situation. Now, Mike Price, he took the blame the last time they were down in the red zone, and they didn't score. I wonder if he's thinking about that right now in the different play calling as Troy Palomalo is back into the lineup. Go ahead. Trying to help his squad yep. out. Guarantee that Mike Price remembers the play call. He told Craig Sager that going into the half. Wishes he'd called a different play. Notice now he's, he has Gesser going under center in a solo set. Two tight ends, two wide receivers, one back. Looking in the right flat pass just out of the reach of Mike Bush. He stretched the 6'6 frame. He needed about four more inches. But that'll be the end of quarter number three. 
just like they did in the opening quarter and the start of the second half, USC scored. But then the Cougars answered. And as we head to the final 15 minutes, Washington State on top of the minute try by three. Let's take a look at our gateway game summary. And as you mentioned, Carson Palmer having a good night tonight. 260 yards, has an interception, but he has thrown a touchdown. How about Green? Career-long 75-yard touchdown and run, which has given the Cougars the advantage as we begin quarter number four. Washington State going for the field goal. From the 17, the 27-yarder is no good. Dunning cannot believe it. He had hit his last three, last two were 48 yards. This man's got a great deal of confidence in himself, and he just cannot believe it. And he talked with Aaron Price, who coaches the quarterbacks and the kickers. Said he's not your normal kicker. You don't have to worry about his, his psyche as much as the other guys. Looks like he missed it a little bit on the right side. He yeah. looks good once yeah. it passes the post. But you got two guys underneath the post looking straight up. Yeah. And they said, no, not good. I think that's what Dunning was, was thinking, that it went over that right upright. USC now with a chance, Washington State not taking advantage of an opportunity. As Kerry Colbert juggles the ball, that's the fifth drop on a Carson Palmer pass tonight. Got to help your offense out when you have an opportunity. You don't see Kerry Colbert do that very often. But Carson Palmer hit him in stride. Colbert juggled it away. Second down and 10. USC has got to take advantage of this situation. Yeah, this field goal should give them really, you know, renewed life on Absolutely. offense. Absolutely. Washington State jumping around on defense. Carson Palmer in the flat complete to Mike Williams. He fights his way. Close to the first down. We'll see where they mark it. I think he got it. I think he did too. Trufant had the first hit, and then Virgil Williams had to come over and help out. Second catch in a row for Mike Williams that he should have been dropped on the spot. Watch where he catches the football. Look at that. That's about the 26-yard line. Marcus Trufant should drop him right there. Doesn't do it. And he doesn't only just run through Marcus Trufant, but Virgil Williams has to hang yeah. on before a posse shows up to put Mike Williams down. You know, you don't want to compare him to somebody, but Charles, he gets that separation that Keyshawn Johnson used to have at USC. Almost by osmosis, considering he's from Tampa, and that's where Keyshawn's playing now. Keep it on the ground with Sultan McCullough. Cuts up over the 435-yard line to the 36. Ira Davis on the stop. All this telecast is a copyrighted presentation of Washington State University, a member of the Pac-10 Conference, the Conference of Champions. It may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form, and the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without express written consent of Washington State University or the Pac-10 Conference. This is an absolutely beautiful sunset. Wow. Love the Palouse. And we have been treated so well coming here. Absolutely. Hey guys, this is another spot I could live. <laughs> I tell you what, it is gorgeous here. Located between the forest of the Rocky Mountains and the Scablands of Washington. Pass is incomplete. Malifu McKenzie, usually pretty sure-handed, cannot get it. See, there's pressure when you come to Washington State because, you know, their famous graduate, Keith Jackson. Of course. And plenty of pressure on yeah. us. The seventh drop pass tonight, speaking of pressure. Malifu McKenzie running a wide receiver screen as a running back. Doesn't catch the balls. He came inside, had, to, had a few blocks set up. Huge third down for both squads. USC needs to have a drive sustained here. Running out of a tight set. Third down and five inside of 14 minutes to play in the ball game. Carson Palmer. Let's it fly, looking for Pearson, backing out of bounds, doesn't get it. Virgil Williams was on the coverage. A lot of pushing and shoving going on. For, for a lot of the game now, I've been calling for USC to push downfield a little bit so that they can have the underneath routes. But you notice how everyone was, was covered short? Washington State's defense flowed right to the five-yard route. By the time a receiver broke deep, it was too late. I think Norm Chow has to find a way to loosen them up by getting some guys deeper with a few patterns. Good snap. 
Malone, a high spiraling kick. Henderson, fair catch it at the 15-yard line. Oh, they've got to get rid of that halo rule. And boy, did he try? He Gerald tried. And Joe gave it an effort, gave it an effort yeah. to try and break down and stop within two yards. He's going to get whistled for a penalty, and he never he never went ahead and launched and hit the guy or anything like that. You know, but, we're, we're hey, I mean, he, it's, it is difficult yeah. to run 40, 50 yards hard and stop. Listen to the call. Five yard. Five yard interference with a receiver foul on the kicking team. Ten yard penalty See the, inside the belt. See, our official has forgotten it's a ten yard yeah. penalty now. Yeah. You know, he's calling it a five yard because there's no contact, but it's automatically a ten now. Well, the fair catch signal came late. Pete Carroll doesn't like it. His team trails by three. Davis, I'm Ron Thula with Aaron Andrews and Craig Sager. Well, Pete Carroll may have a, a beef on that fair catch. That was uh, awfully close. Well, very, again. very tough call on the officials. Watch Mark, watch Daryl Rideau, number 22. He breaks down, tries to stop. So if he's in within that two-yard rule for the halo, the official has to call it. And I wonder about the fair catch call coming late also. Very difficult to tell. <laughs> you know, right. Colin Henderson, they, they, he's made a definite fair catch call. He just kind of waved his arm late, and that's hard. Here's Craig Seger. Well, here's a recap on Troy Polamalu. When he came into the locker room at halftime, the training staff told him to put on his street clothes, but the x-rays were negative. He then talked to Pete Carroll, who told us at halftime that he was in pain, but he hoped to play in the second half. The word is that the ligaments are solid, the x-rays are negative, the stinging pain is gone. He will go out there and goal line stands, but he does not have the mobility to run a long field, so that's why we don't see him out there now. Ron? Five defensive backs. Excellent job, Craig. Pass incomplete, almost picked off. They were looking for DeVar Darling. William Buchanan got a hand on it. You know, there's a, a number of reasons why this is a big game for Washington State. Obviously, the Rose Bowl implications, but since 1995, Gesser and company, the Washington State guys, only 6-17 and 17 versus ranked teams. But when they're ranked play a ranked team, they're only 1-5. and five. They have to beat people like USC. And last last year, they beat UCLA, and that, that, that was their one win when UCLA was number 9. Well, our, our instant poll question is Jason Gesser, the best Washington State quarterback of all time. 70% say no, but that time he was. <laughs> we won't, won't want to count it again. <laughs> yeah, yeah, let's just do that again. Let's do it again. Navar Darling on the reception. So many great Washington State quarterbacks to, to count on. We saw Troy Polamalu, number 43, in that picture. He vacated out going for coverage. DeVar Darling running the tough inside route. Ball was delivered perfectly. Darling knew he would take a hit. Snatched it and put it away. First down, Kubish. First and 10 from the 43, and the clock is obviously the ally of Washington State. They're going to keep it on the ground again with Jonathan Smith. He's tripped up close to the 45-yard line. That's the third head of this three-headed tailback. The Tippins, Green, and Smiths. Hey, look at the numbers, and he has a chance of uh, really going up close to Jack Thompson. Well, you know, coming into tonight, in, ter in terms of total offense, he needed 301 yards, which would pass Ryan Leaf and Drew Bledsoe. We put him in second place in total offense. We see the passing numbers. He still has an opportunity. But look at all those guys that he played that were on that list besides him. All NFL guys. Not too bad. You know, pretty good. Pretty good up there in the Palouse. Three-step drop. Yes, there's pass. Oh, my, what a hit. And a penalty flag is thrown. Deshaun Hill lowered the boom on Bush. My goodness, Hill, the senior out of Long Beach. We heard that up here. Are they going to call helmet-to-helmet -helmet contact think so. going up high? They want to protect receivers when the ball is gone. Personal foul on the defense, 15 yards from the previous spot. Automatic first down. Watch Bush, he's going to get to the outside here. Well, actually goes inside Buchanan because of where he was set up. And he's calling him helmet-to-helmet -helmet contact for the personal foul. 
Okay, I have a bias as an ex-defensive back <laughs> gonna, I was because I think this. he's you know he's, he's going through the man playing the football. Sometimes you inadvertently get up there, yeah. but they do put it in there for safety for the players, and I have a hard time arguing against officials trying to protect players. Another break for Washington State, straight ahead running. Picking up about three on the play is Jonathan Smith. Well, let's listen in to this hit by Deshaun Hill. This is uh, a denture check. Oh my! He knew it right away too. Yeah, but, but you gotta you gotta tell me this though, Charles. That, what's that feel like when you do get a lick in like that? Well, you know, if you ask my coach, you'll say I never got a lick like that. <laughs> but uh, I'll tell you, it is it is it's, it's invigorating. It's the best word I can yeah. use. And then you actually hope it pays off for you later, having a receiver look for you instead of for the ball. Yes, The true freshman, wide open, 36 yards on the reception. Now this is the counter, Ron. Watch Bieniman going right up there. Boom, because everyone was looking out to the far right, far right to Bush number five. See, guess who's throwing to Bush all the time? See the pump fake? Pumps it out all the way to the sideline. The defense moves to Mike Bush number five. Troy Bieniman on the inside, running the seam route. Perfectly delivered. Washington State first and goal on well, the one. Well, Bieniman did not even have a catch coming into this game. He's got two tonight, and Mike Price wants to call the timeout. And that's a good idea because this is a crucial sequence for Washington State. And last week, Mike Price went 52 snaps without a tight end, even in the ball game. Now he's got a different weapon with Bieniman. Timeout, 10.33 to play in the ball game. Washington State knocking on the door. Do you think Jason Gesser is pro material? Oh, great knowledgeable one, Charles Davis, you tell me. I think he has to get into the right system. He's got to get a guy that totally believes in him and will commit to him. And it's very hard to do because he does not have the measurables. You know, he's six feet tall, 180-something pounds. But if you watch him play and watch his toughness, I think he's a guy who definitely merits a look. The hard part is he's not 6'5", 235. That's hard for coaches to absorb. First and goal from the one. Straight ahead, a little bit on the right side. Allen Thompson, nothing doing. The sophomore out of National City, California. His first carry of this year. Now let's see what Mike Price thinks of on play call. Yeah, coaches talked to us yesterday about Allen Thompson, that he's had, that he has the fresh legs and he might be an answer for them in short yardage and goal line situations. We've got a Washington State player down, just on the goal line. I think one of the keys here, if you're Washington State, you did, you could not afford to get down by 10 or 14 points to this USC team because of their defense. They have been able to stay within that seven-point frame. USC scoring first in the opening quarter, scoring first in the third quarter, but they've still stayed in striking distance, and they haven't had to play from that far behind tonight. Yeah, and I talked with observers of Washington State football, people who cover them on a day-to-day -day basis and are always around, and they said the same thing to me, that they were afraid that Washington State's defense, if they got down about 10 points, they might not be able to stay the course because they right. didn't have the same leadership they had last year with a couple of guys. Mm -hmm. Remember the safety, Thompson, and the linebacker, Riel Smith. So they were looking for that from them, and today they haven't had to do it. Well, so far, this drive has been an impressive one. Seven plays. They've gone 70 yards. Some of it on the arm of Jason Gessler. See, when they ask the question about whether this guy's pro material, when you see him delivering the ball, the way that he delivers it, great hit by Hill, penalized on it, that kept the drive going. But you see how smart he was, faking it to the outside, throwing it to the inside? I'm telling you, he's a guy who merits a look. Yeah. You know, let's not, let's not just go by whether he's 6'5 or not. Let's not go by any of those stopwatch numbers. Is he productive when he gets in the huddle? Does he assume command of his ball club? 
And Sam Lightbody, number 75, comes off the field, the injured Cougar. We hope he's okay. But how about this? Jason Gesser is the first three-time captain in Washington State history. Three times. Yeah. He's voted a captain as a sophomore by his own teammates. If that doesn't tell you something about a young man, I don't know what does. To me, that merits a mill look for him right there. <laughs> and because he's, he's got the qualities of leadership. Exactly. Give him an opportunity. Going into the end zone, and it is going to be incomplete. Almost intercepted. Dangerous play. Mike Bush, the intended receiver, William Buchanan doing a nice job in that quarterback spot. William Buchanan looked a little lost in that Kansas State game, not tonight. No, he's growing up fast. You know, he has the great bloodlines. His father was an all-pro. William Buchanan, the NFL with Green Bay and San Diego. Just as we extol the virtues of Jason Gesser, this is a poor throw. Ball's not up and over the top to give Mike Bush's six foot, six inch frame a chance to play on the ball. And here, if Washington State scores, William Buchanan will regret not making that interception. Four wide receivers, Gessler, touchdown Washington State. Devar Darling on the reception. Ball was delivered perfectly too on the deep on the slant in route by Devar Darling and number 31, William Buchanan was on the coverage. This is where the coaches will tell him in film, when you have an opportunity to make a big play and make an interception, you have to do it. Wonder if Washington State didn't have enough guys on the field to take the time out to kick the extra point. I think they had one too many. Oh, they had 12. <laughs> yes, I'm not sure. Here's a touchdown again. See, Buchanan, again, retreats off of his first step. There's no reason to retreat there because the back of the end zone is actually your extra defender. You want the ball thrown over your head, not in front of you for the touchdown. We saw the same thing happen to him in the Kansas State game when he first came in. It's a tough play for the youngster. Let's get an update on the Oklahoma-Missouri game with Ernie in the big house. Thank you guys. Have you had a chance to see Brad Smith of Missouri? Man, this guy can play. The Tiger quarterback has scored twice tonight. He's rushed for 180 yards. His fourth game of at least 100 yards on the ground, and they've taken the lead away from Oklahoma 24-23 with plenty of time. My goodness. You know, it happens every year before the OU Texas game. Dunning's extra point is good. Oh, he remains perfect. And with 10.03 to play in the ball game, the Cougars have their biggest lead of the game at 10, 24 to 14. Three yards on the number one defense in the country. That's why they lead by 10, 24-14, 10.03 to play. Jason Gesser, the records keep falling here at Washington State. Adam Holliday, how about two more? TD pass in 18 straight games, a new record. And how about his 17th with a more than one touchdown pass, also a new record. This is a young guy, the only record he's concerned about now is a Pac-10 title. Look at that, 196 total yards tonight. Now in third place on Washington State's all-time list, just passed. Drew Bledsoe, a pretty good player. That's not a bad player. <laughs> I think he's got a future. Yeah, but you know, when you talk with a young guy, all he cares about is the W's. 24 and 0 as a high school starting quarterback in Honolulu at St. Louis High. He just wants to get to the Rose Bowl and win the Pac-10. Dennis, five yards deep, brings it out, explodes over the 25, fumbles the football, but I think the ground caused it because he was airborne at the 28-yard line. Yeah, the line judge making a definite yeah. signal. You can break up the pile, fellas. It was down. He did explode through the hole. You see the kicker <laughs> tried to upend him Boy, there. Holiday. <laughs> Well, it's a good call because watch as he goes airborne and as he comes down, remember the ground can't cause the fumble. That's exactly why the ball came out. He hit the ground. 
Now let's see how Washington State handles USC here in the final line, 49. Carson Palmer looking over the middle. Pass is complete up to the 40 to Kareem Kelly. You know, we looked at that first quarter of USC. Norm Chow was calling a lot of longer passes. It seems like since that time, most of the calls, as far as the passing game, underneath stuff, five, six, seven, eight yards. I was wondering if they, they felt that they couldn't get deep because Washington State was retreating with their defensive backs. I also wondered if they were just trying to roll them to sleep. But they have not been able to get downfield, and now Washington State is sitting on all the shorter routes, making it difficult for Carson Palmer to throw. Palmer seeing a little bit of pressure, looking deep, has a man, incomplete, intended for Mike Williams. Looked like they may have grabbed his jersey a little bit on that. I think Marcus Trufant may have gotten away with a little uh, reach out and touch someone. And as long as you stay in close and don't get really exposed to where your arm's extended, you can get away with a little grab every now and then. And Marcus Trufant was inside kind of the body frame of Mike Williams. But I like what Norm Chow just did because of what? You see right there, right in the inside part there. He might have gotten a little bit of yeah. jersey. But I like what Norm Chow did because he took a shot downfield. Right. Hopefully that'll loosen up Washington State a little bit, make them respect them a little bit more. Second and ten. Carson Palmer looking for McKenzie. And it is complete up to about the 32-yard line. That is a pretty touch pass. Pickup of 28 on the play. That shows the talent of that young man, Carson Palmer. Yes, now Genitone, number 48, the linebacker, was running with <laughs> Malifu McKenzie. That's a mismatch. Running back on linebacker. Beautiful throw by Carson Palmer. It's what they called man-free coverage. Everyone locked up man-to-man -man with a free safety over the top. The free safety, Eric Coleman, unable to get there in time to help. Remember the Kansas State game where USC came back and even had a chance to tie things up? They've got the potential to do that. Keep it on the ground with Fargus. Davis coming up from that middle linebacker spot, the senior out of Oakland, California. Number 58, what a great story. Here's a young man that went to New Mexico State, actually played football there, decided to come here. Had to walk on and just got his scholarship this Tuesday. Yeah, and remember, he walked on as a senior. Yes. You know, I mean, he played those three years before that at New Mexico State in Las Cruces. Came here for a senior year, and now he's one of their leading tacklers. Second and five, looking for Williams. Pass is complete. They'll mark it at about the 19-yard line. That'll be good for a first down. Big play Saturday keeps rolling after the game with Matt and Cherie at the Movie Bowl. Post-college living advice. Then Mel Gibson, Danny Glover teaming up for Lethal Weapon 4. That's after the game on the Movie Bowl. Only on the TBS Superstation. And thank you. You have to get home and watch it. That's right. Five wide receivers, an empty set. No backs in the backfield. Palmer looking over the middle, looking, throwing, incomplete. Penalty flag is going to be thrown. Threw it into coverage. Virgil Williams was on Kerry Colbert, and I think Williams had the push. This is a heck of a gamble by Carson Palmer, but oh, he yeah. threw it because his receiver was being held. He wanted to expose the call because as soon as he threw it, he started motioning pass interference. Watch. Pass as the play interference ends. on the defense, 15 yards from the previous spot, automatic first down. And watch Palmer. See, he's already motioning it. Pass interference, pass interference, because I was wondering, why is he throwing the ball there? It seems as if he's yeah. covered. But he saw, the, he saw the coverage was so tight that it was interference. Took a gamble, calculated one. That's a fifth-year senior. <laughs> That's a heady player. Guiding your team, and now he's got first and goal on the five-yard line. Now Williams to the near side, eye formation. They keep it on the ground with Fargus, looking for the corner, nothing doing. Inside the five, down to about the three-yard line. Eric Coleman coming up from that free safety spot, the junior out of Spokane, Washington. First time we've called Coleman tonight. He's one of the leaders in the, in the backfield. You can see the drive already 69 yards, less than two minutes. Eight of one yard. Yeah, Aided it big by the pass interference call two plays ago. They 
again, empty set for USC. McKenzie and Kelly to the left. Pumps right, looking. Palmer's got Pater. Touchdown, Trojans. Touchdown by the quarterback, Carson Palmer. That is a solid heads-up play. Yards they were, there were a couple of them on that drive by Carson Palmer. You usually don't give much emphasis to an extra point, but this one's huge. Because oh, yeah. he makes this one, now it's a field goal game, three points. He misses it, USC needs to stop them and score a touchdown. That Colleen has not missed one this year. And he still has it. Well, Carson Palmer looked to the left and it was wide open field. And the touchdown is pulled the Trojans within three, 24-21. Game USC, that's won six of their last Pac-10 games dating back to last year. Pulled within three on a Carson Palmer scamper for the touchdown. And it's 24-21. Now things get interesting. You'd like to see a big kickoff here from Ryan Colleen if you're USC. Give the USC defense an opportunity to work with a long field. Well, he's five yards deep. That'll That'll take it. <laughs> that should do it. This opened up so wide for Carson Palmer. But notice his vision and his patience. Fakes it once, looks for his receiver, able to pull it down because Cream Kelly was covered as was Malifu McKenzie. And then when he saw the open area, he sprinted to it and got there. And you know what that touchdown too, this is a, the first sellout in five years in Martin Stadium. It has quieted the crowd completely, much different than it was in the first 30 minutes of this football game. So that shifts the pressure back to Jason Gesser and the Washington State offense to give them something to cheer about again. He needs to fire him up and he's gonna come up throwing. Pass overthrown, incomplete, intended for Mike Bush. Not even the 6'6", Bush could come up with that one. Now he's fortunate there because it cleared Mike Bush and fell into an open area that was harmless. Could have very easily been picked off. Marcel Allman, number eight, was in the area for USC. You can see their production. How about 430 yards tonight? This is against a defense that was giving up about 205. They're averaging over seven yards a play. That is impressive. Came into the game averaging 6.6 .6 yards a play. Second down and 10. Inside of 7.45. Yes, sir. Wants the home run ball. Has a man caught by Darling. No, they said he stepped out of bounds. Well, he was juggling it. William Buchanan got up immediately and said no catch. Let's see what William Buchanan does because it appeared that it was going to be a catch by Darling. Buchanan doesn't react to Darling's arms going up, but at the end, see how he pulls and strips. Ah. Nice play by the freshman. Right there, see how he gets, gets his hand, his left hand's on the ball. No possession has been established at that point. Mm. He kept pulling and digging and yanked it out. I think it's an excellent call by the officials. Possession had not been yeah. established by either guy. Incomplete pass. Half a hand away from establishing it. Gesser's pass. Incomplete penalty flag is going to be thrown. Pete Carroll goes running down the sidelines and out of the field. Yeah, he's wondering about the guy making the call because the body really shielded it. Hold it. On the defense of an eligible receiver, 10 yards, automatic first down. Get this shot here from Allstate on our goalpost cam. Watch as, watch as the play develops because as they go downfield, watch to the inside. Yeah, I think, you know, the official was kind of on it because Marcel Allman was riding him the whole way. Yeah. Had hands on him the whole time. The hey, good hands were in the wrong spot, <laughs> right? <laughs> we want to thank Allstate for providing tonight's goalpost cam. Allstate, you're in good hands. Jermaine Green. Good legs. Well, another break for Washington State, and Pete Carroll can look up at the clock with 7.15 to play and just hope he gets the ball back. 
Still plenty of time, but they would like to get a three and out here at worst. Well, of course, a turnover is preferable, but a three and out here and get the ball back with plenty of time to run their offense, not have to worry about, two, you know, hurry up in two minutes. So you yeah. see the rushing yards tonight, keyed by Jermaine Green, 75-yard sprint. Watch this, he has 202 yards running the ball. And USC still with all their timeouts remaining here in the second half. Yes, sir. Complete. Riley. Now to Ernie Johnson at the big game house. Ron, let's update Oklahoma and Missouri. The Sooners down one, trying to take the lead with a field goal, or how about a fake field goal? How about Matt McCoy to Chris Chester for six? The two-point conversion made it 31-24. Still a shade over six minutes to play, but the Sooners have reclaimed the lead from the Tigers. I'll tell you what, Chuck Long's getting a little gutty in his old age, isn't he? Yeah, but Bob Stoops, you know, okayed that call. <laughs> That's right. So talk about two guys being gutty there. It makes you wonder how they feel about their defense having to go for a touchdown there instead of kicking the field goal. Now Washington State keeping it on the ground with Jermaine Green. He's going to lose a couple on the play. Clock now closing in on six minutes left in the ball game. The last pass that Jason Gesser completed to Jerome Riley. It's a beautiful route. As we see the guy signaling in, a few of the quarter, backup quarterbacks, they use three of them to signal. One of them is live. We saw that in the super shot. Three different quarterbacks. And they keep changing who the live guy is during the quarter, during the different possessions, all that, so that people can't pick off their signals and know exactly what they're calling each time. Yes, sir. Here comes the blitz. Look out. Let's it fly right as he gets hit. And the pass is incomplete. Intended for Mike Bush again. Deshaun Hill coming up from that free safety spot, the senior out of Long Beach, California. Put the pressure on Gesser again. Look at this. Number 81, Bienemann, trying to get downfield. Look <laughs> to the left of your screen. No way. Kenechi Udeze. All right. He's the guy who was holding him the whole way. Right there in the middle. It was a zone blitz. So the defensive end was actually covering the tight end. And he said, I got to get a little help on this play and grab his jersey. <laughs> That'll work. Got away with it. Boy, Palomalu back into the lineup for USC. They go over the top. Intercepted. Jason Leach at the 47-yard line. And that's where he'll take a seat. Intercepted the number 27, Jason Leach. Tackled by Mike Dangerous Bush. pass by Gesser. Only his fourth interception of the year. There's the turnover that USC had been striving for. And now you're in a position for Washington State's defense, what a lot of programs call sudden change. How do you handle it when we've got the momentum going one way and back to the other? Jason Leach playing for Troy Polamalu, the All-American, his second interception of the year, over the top in man-free coverage. But the safety's able to pick the spot and just flows to the ball. Big interception. Carson Palmer getting the same opportunity he did at Kansas State a couple of weeks ago. Scrambling, throwing, completing down to the 25-yard line, Kerry Colbert. But we have a penalty flag back at the 43-yard line. It's usually a hold. That's what it is. And I thought that he had gotten himself out of trouble with the help of Sultan McCullough, number four, with an excellent block. Watch as Palmer starts to scramble. Look to the right side of your screen. He gets out of the pocket and throws. McCullough Holding on the offense. Ten-yard penalty from the previous spot. Replay first down. McCullough had given him an excellent block to the inside, but they must have detected one of the linemen holding in the interior. That is the 10th penalty against USC tonight for 103 yards. Six for Washington State. 5-13 to play. Another empty set in the backfield. Palmer flushed out of the pocket looking for somewhere to go with it. And he goes into his bench and Palmer is ushered to the ground and the USC coaches want Isaac Brown to get a flag thrown at him. Ref he drove Palmer into the turf. Referee right on the spot. No one wants to see their quarterback hit, but the referee pointed. He was in bounds when the tackle was start when the tackle was launched. 
And a good play by Carson Palmer, just throwing it away, not throwing it up for grabs. But yeah, I come back to my point from before. USC is running routes that are short and underneath. And Washington State's defense is sitting on him and sitting on him and sitting on him. He has nowhere to go with the football. Carson Palmer has thrown for over 300 yards tonight. Second and 20. They bring four, throws it out of the flat to McKenzie. Gets up to about the 44-yard line before he's ushered back. Now let's take a moment to take a look at tonight's All-State Good Hands play. We actually have had a couple tough to choose from, but we'll go with Mr. Bush. On the fade for the touchdown. That's our All-State Good Hands play for tonight. 4.36 to play in the ball game, inside of 4.36. USC, all their timeouts remaining, facing third and 12, trailing by three. This is four down territory. If you don't get it here, you've got to think about going for it on fourth down. Carson Palmer going deep, has a man. Williams got it! Touchdown Trojans! and a touchdown reception to Mike Williams, the longest of his career. Third and 12, the USC receivers knew they had to get at least a first down, and on this one, Mike Williams, the one guy running the deep route and running against the best cover guy for Washington State, Marcus Trufant, who made a play on the ball, but Williams is all over it, and I believe he missed the extra point. He missed the extra point. Oh my goodness, that would have made it a four-point game. Now the Coons trail by just a field goal. His first extra point missed this year for Ryan Colleen. And it also looks on that touchdown that Eric Coleman bit on something, the, the free safety. He looked like he was trying to help Trafant, and then he kind of moved forward. Well, I've talked about them sitting on the shorter routes mm -hmm. and, and watching the, the short receivers. Mike Williams was the only deep receiver in the pattern. So when Eric Coleman is watching, he's thinking, well, they haven't run too many of these deep balls before. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, don't know why he was looking back at the ball and not running to the receiver. But once Williams got behind, he took the ball away from Trufant. And Carson Palmer feeling very good about himself and his team. A huge play at the right time. And now it's a three-point ball game. But see, Williams is the guy who just runs the long route. Everyone else running shorter versions. And boom, right down the middle. And again, Trufant made a play on the ball. Yeah. <laughs> he was right there in position, just didn't get it done. It looks like they bit on the pump fake by Palmer. Now, well, anyway, it was a great pass by Carson Palmer on the touchdown, 55 yards. But if you're Pete Carroll, you look up and you say 4-10. Left in the ball game with a Mike Price team, that's an eternity. <laughs> Jason Gesser at the controls, big time. But they will be going against the wind, but it's not much right now as it has been. This kickoff out of the end zone. Washington State first and 10 from their own 20. TBS Big Play Saturday brought to you by Discover Card. It pays to discover. By the Home Depot, driving down the cost of home improvements. By Teneco Automotive. Teneco Automotive, our mission is go. And by Gateway, you've got a friend in the business. Four minutes and five seconds left. Washington State trailing USC by a field goal. Yes, sir. Plenty of time. Now flushed out of the pocket. Ducks it off to Colin Henderson. The clock will run. He gets up to the 25. Pick up a five. USC, you would think, would be talking about going in with five and six defensive backs. But the way their linebackers run and play, they don't need to pull them off the field. You know, number six, Brutigood, is a, is a strong safety. who has been converted to an outside linebacker. He only weighs about 205, 210 pounds. He can run. Champ Simmons can run as their outside linebacker. They want to keep good players on the field. Five wide receivers. USC brings four. Guessers hit. Throwing deep. Has a man. Caught. Sammy Moore down to the 20. The 
Sammy Moore was brought in from junior college to be a kick return specialist. But he can fly, and he beats William Buchanan, the freshman corner, on a deep, but it's really not a post, it's more of a seam route. And a great throw by Gesser on the money. Nice catch by Moore. 53 yards, 318 to play. Vintage Mike Price offense. Already within field goal range. They're keeping it on the ground. Tippins has stood up, and he'll lose a couple. Mike Pollard, the big middle linebacker out of Long Beach, California, on the stop. You know that long pass does, besides obviously change field position and put Washington State in good shape. They only have one timeout left. It mm -hmm. kind of takes the timeout situation out of their hands. Right. Makes things a lot easier as we look at the quarterback comparison tonight. Palmer's aired it out 50 times. That old run pass balance, gone for yeah, USC. That's toast. Guesser, we would expect that from Palmer, no. Almost 700 yards through the air. Guesser passes incomplete. Intended for Jerome Riley. The fans want a flag. They're not going to get one. Third down and 12 from the 23. Hey! Drew Dunning kicked a 48-yard field goal early in the game. Champ Simmons, number 51, trying to make a play on the ball. Fans thought that he might have wrapped an arm around a Chrome Riley, but he has. But he did, the officials determined that he did not. And now USC pulls the linebackers off the field. Polamalu comes into the game, number 43. Rideau's in the ball game. Almond, they've gone with one, two, three, four, five, six defensive backs. And five wide receivers. Gesser throws complete. Inside the 20, down to the 19 to Colin Henderson. Pick up a four on the play. We'll set up a fourth down and eight. And Drew Dunning is going to come in. Dunning, the junior. Last year, he was money. He was 16 for 16 inside the 41-yard line. Remember how he won the job. 93% of his kicks in preseason to take the job from, a guy, from other guys that people thought would win it. Does Mike Price fake it here? I think he goes ahead and kicks it. The Third. USC should allow him to do so. They have to guard against the fake. 35 yarder looked like it was tipped, but it's good! <laughs> to quote Charlie Waters, I'd rather be lucky than good. The ball <laughs> looked like it was tipped at the line of scrimmage. I believe it was. Yeah. Look at the Turned it into a knuckler. <laughs> Phil Negro would have been proud of that one. Drew goes, I'll take it. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> <laughs> that, that could be the priceless reaction. You know? had, had it all the way, didn't we, guys? Yeah. <laughs> no problem. Now we still have a minute and 50 left to be played in this football game, and we are now knotted at 27. A 48-yarder, a 35-yarder. He thought he hit the 27-yarder. Doesn't matter now. But it belongs to Carson Palmer and Pete Carroll's offense. Now nobody has left the stadium, that's for sure. <laughs> I'd have to take the pulse of anyone who did. Tell him. What are you what are you thinking? But you know, if you're Pete Carroll right now, you're not happy about giving up the tie. No. But aren't you happy you got your hands on the ball with That's a minute 50 to go? You kind of get to decide your own fate with, with Carson Palmer quarterback? Absolutely. Now this is where as a kick return team, whatever you do. You don't make the mistake that Washington State did earlier, fumble a kickoff return, and you have all of your timeouts. Adam Holiday, drilling it. Sultan McCullough inside the five. He is going to be corralled at about the 18-yard line. Big Play Saturday is presented by... T-Mobile and Discover Card. We are at Martin Stadium in Pullman, Washington. Number 18 USC, number 17 Washington State. Charles Davis, Craig Sager, Aaron Andrews. I'm Ron Thula with 144 left. USC, Washington State tied at 27. USC all three timeouts. 
Yes. Williams and McKenzie wide to the left. Palmer going to be swamped back at the 10. Ryan Long, the junior, coming up with the sack, his first of the evening. He's the guy who collapses things in the middle. Jeremy Williams, number 95, came from the left side, occupied a couple of blockers. Long defeated his man. A huge sack. The second time he's gotten in tonight with big time pressure on the quarterback. Could not have come at a better time. If you're USC, you have all of your timeouts, but you have to be careful turning the ball over here. 60 seconds left in the game. Might be thinking overtime yeah, I think right you're now. Right. Just by that play call, they were hoping that if it popped, then you might run different plays. But since it didn't, now you might want to just tuck in and go turtle. Pull it all inside the shell, right? <laughs> go and turtle. think hard about it. You know, pull the head in, the <laughs> arms, everything. Turtle up because now Washington State would be out of timeouts. Jason Gesser can only sit and watch. Timeout with 46 seconds left to be played. Just a reminder, Matt Sheree are still standing by at the big game house for the movie bowl. Danny Glover, Mel Gibson, and it will be Lethal Weapon 4 only on TBS Superstation immediately following this game tonight. What a great night of football here at Washington State. Next week, don't forget, Texas Tech at Iowa State. Iowa State off this week. You can see what Carson Palmer has done on third down. That is called clutch throwing. Last time they went deep with Mike Williams for a touchdown on a third and 12. Let's see what they decide to do in this situation. Remember, they ran the ball on second and long in a situation that many people thought they would throw the ball. See Norm Chow circled right there, the offensive coordinator, deep in thought, discussing possibilities, I'm sure, with Pete Carroll and other offensive staff members about what they should call here in this situation. USC trying to open up the season 4-1 and one for the first time since 1998. Did you notice Pete didn't have his headset on there? No. <laughs> I guess Pete said, I trust you guys Let's <laughs> to go make for this it. call. <laughs> Third down and 18. This better be simple. But the Washington State Cougars out of timeouts. Again, an empty set. He's going to keep it. Got some running room to the 25, to the 27-yard line. That'll be about a yard and a half, maybe two yards short. Carson Palmer gave it everything he could give it. And with 31 seconds left, the clock continues to move, and that'll set up fourth down. And really, they haven't reset the play clock yet, so they don't have to run another play. They just go out there and line up and don't do it. That's anything. right. I and, think that's what they're going to do. And that's that's a down. smart move because you don't want to take the opportunity to let Washington State rush your punter and block one and get it done here before the game's over. Go yeah. ahead now. You've played for overtime by your play calling. <laughs> and that's right. And here it is. Both teams heading to the respective sidelines, and we are headed to our first overtime of the year. Now Pete Carroll's squad, they needed to come back by from 10, and they did just that. Ryan Long with a timely sack. But what an offensive showdown tonight. 509 yards for Washington State, 462 for USC. But it doesn't matter. Throw all the numbers out the window. Ready. Don't forget the field house is open after the game for the fifth quarter rally. Get a prime rib dinner for just $12 tickets. Well, in college football, the coin toss so important. Let's take a look at the overtime rules. Each team gets equal possessions with the ball. Start at the opponent's 25-yard line. You retain possession until they score or fail to make a first down. And if there is a third overtime, both teams must go for two after the touchdown. And they will have a coin toss to determine who gets the ball Remember first. Where we are down here. Because right away, play the play, but damn it, you hang out with that quarterback for the bullshit. You know what I'm saying? Okay. 
Now you heard him say, stay with the quarterback. A large screen, that ran all day. Yeah. 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 A lot of coaching going on on the sideline for both of these squads. It's Bill Doba, the defensive coordinator for Washington State. He's had to match wits all day long with Norm Chow. But now you have the coin toss, all right? You win the coin toss, you get a chance to defer. But most teams, when they get it, they choose to play defense first so they know where they have to match. And then whoever wins the toss can't defer will have a choice of uh, offense, defense, or which end of the field you want to play at. Okay? The winner will get that choice. So what's, who's going to call it? For tense calling, what are you going to call? You're going to call tail. There, there's your tail, there's your head. Tails has been called, and it is head, so you win the call. You want to be on defense, which end of the field you want to play in. Okay, we're gonna, uh, you're going to be on defense, so spin around this way. Well, Mike Price got what he wanted. Washington State won the toss. They've elected to play defense. University of Southern California has elected to play at the east end of the field. Overtime, straight ahead, USC, Washington State, don't touch the dial. We have had a number of big plays. We had the interception by Southern Cal. And then Williams with the touchdown. And then the other big place, Sammy Moore. 54 yards, and then the field goal that tied the game up from Drew Dunning. And we are heading to OT, tied at 27. Dunning's really get tipped, and he just knuckled them all that one through. I, th I thought I heard the tip from up yeah. here, to be honest with you. Because uh, if it was, that was one ugly kick. Yeah. If it wasn't tipped. I'll tell you, I said before, Phil Necro would have loved that one. You know, had that baby dancing like crazy on that knuckler. No style points in field goal kicking. Now, now, listen, when you look in the books, that looks like the most beautifully kicked ball ever, right? That's right. <laughs> well, let's talk strategy right now. USC will have the ball first. They'll get it at the 25-yard line. Washington State on defense. And Washington State comes out in base defense. Their normal 4-3 look for defensive backs. USC shifts to the eye formation with the days of yore. Pearson moving over. They give it to Sultan McCullough. Maybe picks up two on the play. Wally Davis blowing a sneaker on that, putting it back on. And Pete Carroll now will have play number two. And they, and they trot out Pearson, the fullback, and Cream Kelly and bring on McKenzie, number 21, who's a dual threat as a runner and a catcher. Mm -hmm. Going back to the empty set. Five receivers in the pattern. McKenzie wide to the left. Palmer looking, looking for some help. Drive down at the 30-yard line, Ryan Long. His second sack of the night, the fourth by Washington State. Coverage sack. Why? The secondary really snuffed the receivers. And Paul Ray tried to pump a couple of times, had to pull it down, and Long was able to get to him. A good job by Palmer putting it away so that Long could not strip it. Now it brings up a third and 14. That young man has come along very strong as the game has continued. Kareem Kelly wide and left. Colbert on the near side. They're going to keep it on the ground and they're going to lose yardage again. That puts the field goal a long one. They lost another four, maybe five on the play. That'll be a 52-yard attempt, maybe 51. Ryan Long once again doesn't just play the pass, plays strong on the run. Watch the middle of your screen. There he is, number 88. Guy who was a basketball player in high school, never really thought much about football until someone talked him onto the field. And yeah. yeah, they're going to call a timeout. Yes, USC calling the timeout. 
Ryan Long, a couple of big sacks late in the game, especially here in OT. It's fourth down, 19 to go. Ball's on the 34-yard line, so that would be a 51-yard attempt by Ryan Colleen. His longest is 43 coming into this game. No punting here. No, <laughs> no. Because you, you've got to use your possession. Now let's take a look at our U.S. Army's player of the game, and what would you expect? How about Carson Palmer with 49% of the votes, Jason Gaffer with 54%? Smart choice by our fans. Yeah, they're nothing if not knowledgeable. That's right. This is it. If you're Washington State, you just don't want to get a penalty for running into the kicker here. Malone holding Colleen, 52-yarder. Does it have it? No good off to the right. Now the number one defense that came into this game ranked number one. It's up to them looking at it again. This one never had a chance. From the word go. Pushed it right, never really close to being on target. Never hooked it. Would you say it was 43? It was as long before? Yep. Here's Craig Sager. Well, people may be wondering where David Davis is. He was the number one kicker for USC in the entire Pac-10 percentage-wise last year. He lost his job in the Kansas State game when he was inconsistent. Then in practice the other day, he was injured. And right now he's been replaced by Ryan Colleen, who had a big chance right there and missed it. Meanwhile, David Davis back home. And that's right. And now from the 25. Tippins in the backfield. Straight ahead running. Up to the 22-yard line. Now, here's that case you were talking about. You run a couple of plays, keep it in the middle of the field, then you kick the field goal? I think you kick the field goal on third down because USC has had their possession. So you don't have to worry about them getting another possession. You don't need six, you just need three. Kick it on third down in case something goes wrong with your snap or the ball's blocked and you get possession again, then kick it again on fourth down if necessary. But keep it in the middle, make sure Tippins runs in the middle with two hands over the football, no fumbles here. And he gets inside the 20 down to about the 17 yard line. Let's see what Mike Price does. Tell you, I Dunning is waiting. I wouldn't hesitate. I'd run him out there right now and get this thing done if I'm Washington State. And I would not run it down to fourth down. And he's not. Dunning, one of the most confident players on this Cougar team, already with a couple of field goals tonight, he has a chance to win it. USC has run Mike Williams into the game, number one, right there. He's 6'5 receiver, hoping he can help block it in the middle. Try to get a running jump. 35-yarder. Game over. Just cooking it, man. Just cooking it. His turn for good plays, good pace, and tonight, a big win. And the Rose Bowl is still on the horizon for the Washington State Cougars. A big win for Mike Price, the second winningest coach here at Washington State. A disappointing loss for USC. USC next week will be home to host California. Washington State will travel to Stanford. We'll be back to Pullman, Washington. The Cougars win it in overtime.
The American West, the home of the brave. You've always been gutless. Yeah, I think so. Where a man knows how to treat a lady. You're just so irritating and likable. Oh, I have to work on that, I guess. You see, there you go. You're not likable again. And money never took the place of honor. Mel Gibson, Jodie Foster, James Garner, the TBS Superstation premiere. Everybody's got a gun. You got a point there. Maverick. Sunday night at 8 Eastern, only on TBS Superstation. Tread lightly, son-in-law. There are more traps lying ahead. Big Play Saturday has been presented to you by Discover Card and T-Mobile. Well, let's head it down to Craig Sager as the Cougars win it in overtime. Craig? Final score, 30 to 27. The celebration continues at Pullman. Coach Mike Price, how proud are you of your team? You kept telling them to finish. They had to come from behind and do it in overtime. We finished pretty darn good, didn't we? This guy right here, what a champion. What a winner. Inspiration. You look up at the scoreboard, you got the win. You also got enough yardage to pass a couple of good named quarterbacks. But how much does this win mean to you? The win means everything to me. I mean, that's all, that's all I want to do is win games and get W's. And that, that's, that means the world to me right now. When everybody started to celebrate, you ran to the other side to talk to Troy Polamalo. What did you tell him? I told him, hey, he's a hell of a player. I hope he's good. He got hurt early in the game. Uh, hopefully I'll be playing with him on Sundays one day. That's what I said. Hopefully I'll see him again. And, um, you know, he's a tremendous athlete, and I give him all the world. Looking for back-to-back -back winning seasons and a lot more. They said you were the number one team in the back 10 going in. How do you assess your team now? Uh, I think this group we're pretty good. Uh, we moved the ball really well, better than I thought we would. Uh, that's a good defense we played tonight. And our defense came through when it had to. Well, you signed a new contract to stay in Pullman. I think it's going to be a happy place tonight. There were some great plays in this game, wasn't there? It was awesome. Well, Charles, you said you could live here. Might as well join the celebration. <laughs> we'll go down there and body surf with the students right now. Well, yeah, they're looking to make consecutive bowl appearances, which would be a first at Washington State. Let's take a look at tonight's Wrangler five-star play of the game, and you have to go with the field goal by Drew Dunning, Charles. Yeah, dead down the middle as he touches off the celebration that's going to rock long into the night here in Pullman. I'm sure it will spill into the surrounding counties area. Wrangler, real comfortable jeans. Well, they're now two and four in overtime. Washington State, Gesser gets his 19th win as a starter. He leads in that category here at the school. More importantly, five and one on the year. And the record in the Pac-10 conference looks good. And Washington State came into this season, Mike Price's 14th season, never having had back-to-back -back winning seasons, had not gone back-to-back -back bowls, came in the preseason pick as the top team in the Pac-10. They had a lot to prove tonight with this ball game. They got it done. Once again, the final 30-27 for the latest scorers. In-depth analysis, CNNSI.com, Sports Illustrated at CNN Speed. And our next telecast will be next Saturday at 7 p.m. Eastern on TBS. Texas Tech travels to Ames to take on the 15th ranked Iowa State Cyclones. And Big Play Saturday continues with a movie bowl as Mel Gibson and Danny Glover star in Lethal Weapon 4. Once again, for Charles Davis, Craig Sager, Aaron Andrews, and the rest of the crew, I'm Ron Thulin saying good night from Coleman, Washington, where the final score was Washington State 30, USC 27 in overtime. Now let's send it back to EJ at the Big Game House. All right, thank you very much, Ron. Great stuff from the Pac-10 tonight.